Anna. And I'm Heron. And today we are traveling around New York City to find the best pastrami, pastrami sandwich. sandwich. I love, 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 love pastrami sandwiches. There are pastrami sandwiches basically sold everywhere throughout the city. True. They are found in bodegas, mom and pop stores, and just giant restaurants that have been around for over a century. Yeah, and we narrowed it down to the four major spots you should hit. And being from New York, I've heard of some of these places. And some of these places we basically picked out off of just good old fashioned internet research and cross that's about it. Yeah, that's yeah. about it. Yeah, All yeah. right, well, I am starving. <laughs> Let's go. Our first stop is Harry and Ida's. Located in the East Village, it's a sandwich counter and general store, best known for its modern take on the pastrami sandwich. The best pastrami sandwich come to Harry and Ida's. Oh, I said. So Harry and Ida is my great grandparents, and uh, they had a delicatessen up in Harlem about 70 years ago. And me and my sister Julie opened this place about five years ago just to keep the keep it alive. So the traditional pastrami in New York is uh, beef brisket and seasoned with coriander, garlic, sometimes a little bit of allspice and plenty of black pepper and salt. If you want to get really traditional, then you hand slice it and throw it over a rye with mustard. But we don't do anything like that. I'd say our pastrami is definitely a little bit more unique. For one, we're one of the only places in New York that still smokes it by hand ourselves. And we're using the fattier part of the deco. It's like a more marbled steak. And I would say our ingredients are a little bit different. We have things like fish sauce in it to all sorts of other crazy spices that you wouldn't typically find. For me, I, I wanted to change up the bread. I grew up with it, I've had it before, but we wanted to be something different. We planted a pretty generous amount of uh, anchovy mustard and a buttermilk fermented cucumber slaw with toasted rye berry and a huge amount of fresh dill on top. You're getting a lot of the old flavors, but it definitely comes in a totally, totally different form. The toughest part is to get traditionalists and purists to actually try the sandwich because people get very offended that we don't have rye bread or traditional mustard on it. But always without question, once we get someone to try it, they're hooked for life. Oh my gosh. Okay, first things first, let's try the pastrami by itself. Pastrami by itself. Got it. That marbly Ooh. and thickness. Okay. Shall we? Yep. Okay. I don't think I've ever been this happy in a very long time. I have to say like, First bite reminds me more of like like a steak or like a dinner than like what I think of like, you know, thinly sliced pastrami. This is more like a meal. I'm more curious about the bread. Yeah. And before this gets any colder, let's take a bite. All right. Mm. So good. Oh my God, this is it. Is this cucumber? You should swallow before you. Oh talk. my god! Sorry. <laughs> the the pastrami is so thick and so fatty that the dill and the pickled cucumber cuts through that richness. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> you feel that? You ate it faster than I did. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> More alarm. Mm -hmm. Our second stop is Katz's Deli a New York City staple and arguably the most famous pastrami spot we're visiting. It's the best. It's the best pastrami ever, anywhere. I think what makes Cat's pastrami the best is the way they cut their meat. It's, it's the cutters. They, they have the magic. It's the very best. If New Orleans has beignets, New York has pastrami. This is Jake Dell. He's a fifth generation owner at Cat's Deli. And if you're talking about pastrami, there's no better place than Cat's Deli. Not just me, but our customers think that we have the best pastrami sandwich in the world because we cure it ourselves, we smoke it ourselves, it's done the old-fashioned way. We've never changed the recipe here at Katz's. It's, it's the same flavors that you would have had in 1888. When you first come in, you get a ticket. That's your everything. So if you don't have a ticket, we put you to work. And maybe 30 years later, we let you leave. Your ticket to order, your ticket to exit. Bring them back on the way out. What happens if we lose our ticket? Stay here with us, guys. We charge a $50 fee plus whatever you want. Okay, okay. Bring them back when you're done. Thank you. You're welcome. Then you go down the line and start figuring out what you want. It's cafeteria style. Money to? Nah. You can pay for this. Wow, that's deep. 
Then you go to the cutters. When you get to the front of that line, you better know what you want because we'll yell at you a little bit. Pastrami on rye. Pastrami on rye. I don't like being yelled at. But, uh, the pastrami on rye. Yell at, yell at her. We were told you would yell. The cutter's gonna give you a nice taste of that pastrami. Get you excited for the real thing. Free samples. This is like Costco. You can't compare this place with Costco. There's only one real way to eat a pastrami sandwich, in my opinion, and that is on rye with a little bit of mustard. That's all you need. Oh, oh my God. Some gifts oh, God. All right. All right, that way. All right, how do we even oh, find man. a seat? <laughs> this was probably like the first place I've had a pastrami sandwich like ever, and now it's one of my favorite foods. Really? So, what about you? Uh, I've never been here. My parents have been here. But so you're from Long Island. Okay, I know. I don't get out much. <laughs> Let's see if it lives up to the hype. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. It just oozes juice. While I like my pastrami very thin, mm -hmm. I appreciate the thick slabs here because it just has an extra hearty mouthfeel. Right. I want to try this with the mustard. <laughs> What? <laughs> that was cute. As Alana struggles, I shall teach you how it's done. Go for it. Bro, you just like, that was like some snake moves. You ever mm -hmm. see like a snake? I am so happy right now. This is gonna be pretty hard to beat. Our third stop is David's Brisket House in Brooklyn. It was once Jewish owned, and now it's owned and operated by a Muslim family. To be honest with you, the reaction is they always say it's a five star, it's better than cats. People always talk about David's biscuits. You have to go try the pastrami. It lives up to its billing. There's a review on Yelp. It's a Jewish guy, he came in here and uh, he said the same thing. He was very skeptical about the food, but then he wrote a big review saying he wishes his mom never catch him doing this. It's like a taboo. So we can put it into a process. We do in a steam on a 350 degrees. And then after we finish cooking it, we let it stay, turn off the heat, and keep it in there. I mean, it is time consuming, but it, it's worth it. It's worth, uh, it's worth a while. My personal opinion is when you cut it with a slice machine, it tastes a lot better. It holds its juice in it. But when you cut it thick, um, it just doesn't taste sandwich-like. It tastes more like a, like a meal. Three, two, one. Mm. Mm. So when I first took a bite of the pastrami by itself, again, the seasoning stood out, but I didn't think it was you know as juicy as the ones we've had before. But in the sandwich form, all the juices that were on the meat keep getting caught within each other. I agree. It's like... um. You know those like stone waterfalls? Yeah, yeah. So like if the juice is the water and the stones are the meat, it's just like all up in there, all in the crevices. Yeah. We are such great food reviewers. <laughs> I feel like the pastrami here has a lot more of like a seasoning or taste. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think the, the meat here is as like tender. Right. But you're still getting that very hearty fatty, marble taste every time you take a bite. I could probably do with more pastrami. Our last stop is Second Avenue Deli in Murray Hill. The kosher restaurant has been family owned since 1954 and is known for its Jewish deli classics and modern menu items. So Second Avenue Deli is surely my favorite restaurant anywhere to get deli, to get anything. This would be my last meal if I ever had a last meal that I had to order. We came up with what we consider is the right recipe, and we think we have the best pastrami in the world. The secret is the spicing, and in the preparation, and the steaming. Just It's a combination of many different factors in getting it just right. We slice it so fine, they, they, it just tastes better. Whoever does the slicing has to know what he's doing. Like see? literally you can see through it. Yeah, you can see even through. You see? Thin little slices like you can melt in the mouth. Look, people come in here and they can't eat just a little bit. And we know that. 
<laughs> and that's why we make it super thick. I'm coming in here a little biased. Okay. Because I come here at least once a month. Once a month, Aaron? <laughs> when I look for a great pastrami sandwich, I want that rye bread to be super duper plush. I want that meat to be fatty, juicy, and well marbled, and have like the exterior seasoning to just like really shine through through each bite. And I get that here every time. It is consistent. Well, I kind of want to try it now. You're gonna have a bite of this and just be like, "This is it." Jeez. Okay. So good. Okay, the seasonings aren't just flavoring the meat for me. Mm -hmm. Like you were saying, they're like adding that crunch and that texture. They steam the pastrami here for a longer time than other places because it like just makes it even more juicy and moist. Mm -hmm. Try wow. with the mustard now. Okay. Is there any meat left in this? What do you, mean? you smeared the whole thing with mustard. Just the top part? Fine, I suppose. All right. Mm. Okay. This is a sandwich for the gods. Does yeah. it get any better than no, that? No, okay. Straight up, the sandwich was like 9.5. Mustard made it like easy 12. It's the moment you've been waiting for. Oh my god. All right, this was really hard. I think this was probably like one of the hardest episodes that we shot so far. I'm so sick of pastrami. <laughs> I'm so sick of pastrami. Let's decide which one was the best. Alrighty, I already have mine. I already know what it's gonna be. I already know she's gonna be wrong. One, two, three. I knew it. I'm disappointed. She's so not predictable. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> so why do you think that Second Avenue Deli is the best? Why do I know that Second Avenue Deli is the best? I, I say what I said. <laughs> Second Avenue Deli always has, always will be my favorite pastrami sandwich in New York City. It's consistent, it's good every time. I love the thinness of the pastrami. I think the layering of it just really makes it for a very satisfying mouthfeel. It still sticks to its fruits of like just that classic, iconic pastrami sandwich. What about you? Why did you pick Harry and Ida's? Well, I'm glad that you admitted that Second Avenue Deli is and has always been your favorite deli, so you admit your bias a little bit. No, I, I came in <laughs> with an open mind. That's good. Oh uh, no, like thinking about it, what, what you said makes sense, you know? The meat is cut super thin, it is very juicy, it is very seasoned. I definitely see why you made that choice. Mm -hmm. However, for me, it's 2019, and I think it's time to sort of, you know, modernize the pastrami sandwich. Okay. I personally love the seasoning on Harry and Ida's. I agree with it you. It was flavorful. The meat itself was so juicy and marbled. It literally tasted like brisket. Oh my god, it was just melting your mouth. And then the bread itself, I personally, you know, after tasting all of the pastrami sandwiches, I don't think I'm a big huge fan of rye bread. You're pitting against a new sandwich with it's like with like an a, a perfect staple. OG sandwich. Okay, so Alana, do you concede? Do you want to debate more? Someone's got to give. All right, all right. For this one time, but I guess for this one time, I'll have to concede. Y'all, there are more episodes here. I just I'll want concede. a tally. It's twice now. Whatever, <laughs> I guess, I guess I gotta give it to Second Half Deli. It's Second Half Deli. All right, guys. You heard it here first. Do you agree with Heron over here, or do you think that Harry and Ida's deserve the number one spot? Or was it one of the two places we visited that didn't make our boards? Or a completely other place that we didn't even hear of? Let us know in the comment section below. Bye. See ya.